Watching Alabama's WVUA News at 10. And you are looking live at the Tuscaloosa Regional Airport. The Blue Angels fleet is in town tonight because in less than 36 hours, the Angels, along with the Golden Knights and several other aircraft, will take to the skies for the 2012 air show. Your home team will bring you coverage as the skies of Tuscaloosa fill up with Angels. And thanks for joining us tonight, everyone. The buzz around Tuscaloosa is not just coming from the airplanes above, but mainly the hype surrounding the air show. So what should you expect if you are attending? WVUA's Travis Leader tells you how to make your air show experience a fun one. Okay, air show fans, here's what you need to know if you are going to this weekend's event. The Tuscaloosa Regional Air Show will begin at uh, 9 o'clock when the gates open, Saturday and Sunday. And flying will go all the way until almost 5 o'clock. You won't be able to park at the Tuscaloosa Regional Airport, though, so the city is helping you get to the show. We will ferry people in and ferry people out. The shuttle buses will run from Tuscaloosa County High School from the Intermodal Facility or Kmart South. Now that you made it to the air show, what are all the attractions that are going to be here? We have uh, 67 airplanes that people can uh, look at from home built to World War II to Vietnam to Gulf War. It's just a lot of mix of different kinds of airplanes. And of course, the famed Blue Angels will close the weekend festivities. You will also get to see the acrobatics of the U.S. Army Golden Knights. Well, on each day, we'll be performing our mass exit, where all uh, 10 of our jumpers will exit the aircraft simultaneously, have smoke canisters burning on their feet, parachutes opening up around 2,000 feet, and then it's an exciting show for the American public. The event will also showcase some local talent, and one pilot promises to send shockwaves throughout the area. The thing that makes a T-6 show stand out, I'm not saying above, but just different than the other airplanes, it's just loud. It's a lot of smoke and you can hear it miles away. It, it rattles the doors. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Travis Leader, WVUA News. And WVUA will be bringing you live coverage of the air show tomorrow during our 5 and 6 o'clock newscast. Plus, tomorrow, WVUA's own Lynn Brooks will ride along with pilot Michael Wiskus, who's known for his death-defying acrobatics. And Daniel Sparkman will ride along with a wing walker. And on Saturday, WVUA's Danny Salter will ride along with the Golden Knights Parachutes team. Join your home team for all the excitement throughout the rest of the weekend. Your home team health watch tonight, the latest on the hepatitis A concern in West Alabama. According to the Alabama Department of Public Health, there have been no additional cases reported. Now, this comes just one day after health officials warned some customers of the McDonald's in Northport may have been exposed to the virus. The health department said yesterday they gave approximately 266 vaccinations and gave more today. Officials say the exposure was through an infected employee. Dr. Mary McIntyre of the Alabama Department of Public Health says they are contacting health care providers in Alabama and surrounding states because of the location of the McDonald's. There could have been people that traveled to that or through there because we know that we're in spring break season um, to make sure other states are aware that if they have people reporting or having symptoms consistent with hepatitis, to ask them if they travel to the Northport uh, McDonald's. Now, if you ate at the McDonald's February 29th through March 13th, health officials say it's too late for a vaccine. So if you have symptoms, see your doctor. But if you are if you visited the restaurant March 14th or on the morning of March 16th, official urge you to contact your health care provider and get the hepatitis A vaccine by this Friday if you have not done so already. Well, in your crime watch tonight, a Tuscaloosa man is charged with attempted murder accused of shooting his girlfriend. According to the Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide Captain Boyd Baker, Patrick Berthelot is accused of shooting his girlfriend in the back twice. It happened around 4 o'clock Wednesday afternoon at 235 James Harrison Parkway. Baker says after the shooting, Berthelot got away. The Tuscaloosa Police, the Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office, Metro Homicide Unit, the U.S. Marshals and Aviation Units from TPD and the Sheriff's Office conducted a search. Berthelot was arrested at a gas station on exit 97 on Interstate 2059 early this morning. Baker says the shooting stemmed from a domestic dispute. He became violent. She fled the scene to a friend's apartment. Uh, the suspect forced his way into that apartment and started shooting. Uh, as she tried to get away, she was shot twice, and this friend was able to wrestle the gun away from the suspect. Baker says the victim was rushed to DCH for surgery. She is listed in critical but 
stable condition in ICU. Also in your Crime Watch tonight, there are new details in the Tuscaloosa sexual abuse case. According to police, the victim is a 15-year-old boy. Now police say 26-year-old Deontay Martez Hall is charged with sodomy and sexual abuse. Authorities say the charges stem from an incident reported March 12th, which happened on the 3800 block of First Avenue. The shooting death of Florida teenager Trayvon Martin has blown up into a firestorm on several different fronts. Now, the man who killed Martin, George Zimmerman, claims it was in self-defense, while Martin's family and friends insist the 17-year-old was unarmed and that his death was murder. All across the nation, people remain divided over the issue. Tonight, some Tuscaloosa residents held a rally for Martin and others killed in violent crimes. WVUA's Taylor Montgomery was there. As the sun sets on A.L. Freeman Park in Tuscaloosa's Westlawn community, a celebration of unity is just beginning. People from all over West Alabama came together to honor those who have died in violent ways, like Trayvon Martin in Florida. Get a message through to the young people to let them know that uh, it's time for this to stop. For me, it really touched me because as I look around, it could have been anyone out here and instead of being here, I would have been at a funeral. So I feel like it is very important for everybody to embrace this and for everybody to try to come together for justice. I think, um, I think the world needs healing and I think the people are really, really interested and really want to hear some positive messages. But attendees and organizers of tonight's event say they're not only concerned about the case in Florida, they're also worried about diversity right here in the Druid City. This is not only going down down there in Florida, this is going on all over the United States. We decided to get together and have a local rally here to bring awareness to what's going on, not just in Florida, but what's going on around Tuscaloosa. They are going to leave here with the wealth of knowledge and the fire to go do what's right. In Tuscaloosa, Taylor Montgomery, WVUA News. Zimmerman told police he shot Martin after the 17-year-old attacked him. His attorney has said Zimmerman's nose was broken in the fight and the back of his head was gashed. However, a lawyer for Martin's family says a newly released video recorded about 30 minutes after the shooting shows Zimmerman's nose wasn't broken and that he had no noticeable blood on his head or his face. Well, an update to a story that we brought you earlier this year. A Tuscaloosa County teen will be allowed to attend prom with her same-sex date. Now, Brookwood High sophomore Elizabeth Garrett has said she was told by an administrator same-sex couples could not attend the prom. The Southern Poverty Law Center said that the ban violated Garrett's constitutional rights of free speech and equal protection. Former Tuscaloosa County Superintendent Dr. Frank Costanzo said Brookwood High did not have any written procedure or local school policy preventing a student from attending a prom with a same-sex date. The issue arose when Garrett said she was told by an administrator to remove a sweatshirt with a pro-gay message. Now, the Tuscaloosa County Board of Education Board Attorney Ray Ward released this statement today saying the school system for some time has allowed for students to bring same-sex dates to the prom. Also, the board has a policy which provides that an article of clothing with slogans, symbols, patches, and obscene writings which are disruptive to the school's teaching and learning process are prohibited. As long as the article of clothing does not violate the policy, they will be permitted. Well, this year marks the Green Beverage Company's 75th anniversary, and to help celebrate, they brought the Budweiser Clydesdales to Tuscaloosa. The Clydesdales were initially given to the owner of the company that day that prohibition ended, and today Green Beverage shared the gift with almost 1,000 people that came to the Tuscaloosa Amphitheater to see them. There is a team of eight horses that pull the classic Budweiser wagon, complete with drivers and a Dalmatian. I mean, they represent America, you know, they represent Budweiser, and that's what our company sells. So uh, we contacted them and set that up, and uh, we wanted to have an event for the community to show our appreciation to them over the years. And, and the Clydesdales will be at Walmart in Tuscaloosa tomorrow from 2 to 4, and at the Tuscaloosa Regional Air Show this Saturday.